This video is part two of my review of the Walther's mainline SW7s in Illinois Central Gulf. This video I'm going to do a DCC decoder install as well as speaker installations. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So just for simplicity's sake, I'm only going to show you one locomotive in the video, but I'm going to do both of these simultaneously. So these, ver these locomotives, the Walther's mainline, are DCC ready, and they have the new Next18 plug-in, which ironically, up until about a month ago, this is, uh, it's August of 2021, uh, the NMRA, National Model Railroad Association, actually just approved the, the Next18 as, um, as an approved uh, NMRA standard for DCC decoder. So, Kind of cool that this uh, just was approved by the NMRA, so this is a fairly new plug-in uh, for a DCC decoder. The supplies you're going to need to do this, certainly you're going to need your decoder. This is a personal preference. I've leaned more towards ESU over the tsunamis lately. You'll need a speaker. I'm going to talk about the speakers here as I get into the, the operations, but I purchased this from Scale Sound Systems. It's not shown in the video right now, but I'm going to need to solder these to the decoder board. So I'll need your soldering equipment, some wire to take care of that, some double-sided tape to get the um, speaker secured, and that's all you'll need. Here's a close-up of the speaker, and I just want to spend just a minute or two here talking about this. Um, by no means is this a paid endorsement or anything, but I have found there is a company called Scale Sound Systems. The gentleman who owns its name is JT Burke. Uh, he does a phenomenal job. He builds these speakers himself. They're depending on what type of locomotive you're getting. They're about twelve to fourteen dollars per speaker, and the nice thing is he builds them per the specifications of what's going to fit within the model. So this particular speaker here is absolutely designed specifically for the Walther's EMD SW7. So even though I haven't had the shell off the locomotive yet, I know that I'm not going to have to fight with uh, getting the speaker to fit because it is already designed for that. So his JT's website is in, um, you'll see it on the bottom of the screen here. It's also in my description. You can purchase the speakers and do self installations. I actually got the decoders from him as well, by the way. Um, so you can purchase it and do it yourself, or you can mail your locomotive in, which I did that with one of my GP9s, the original Illinois Central GP9. It was a Athern Genesis from about 2012. It had an original Tsunami 1 decoder in it. Um, it had incandescent bulbs. I mailed it into JT. He put a Lux on 5 in it, uh, Keep Alive in it, upgraded the, LED, uh, the lights to LEDs. Uh, just did a phenomenal job. So I highly recommend JT. I, I purchased from him. He's not a sponsor or anything, so it's not a paid endorsement. It's just my opinion. He's a good guy. He's great for, the, for our hobby. And just real quick, as I mentioned it when I was talking about the speakers, you can get decoders from JT as well. So this is, again, it's a it's an ESU Lux on 5. The number on this is 5A828. You can purchase this as a blank decoder. I mean, that's how they come, it's a blank decoder. So if you don't have a low programmer, a lot of the um, hobby shops that you can purchase these from will actually program them for you. So this is already programmed for an SW7. Once I get it installed, I'll walk through the process of how you would install the sound file on here if you if you purchased it directly as a blank decoder but um, JT was nice enough to preload these uh, with with the SW7 sound so they're out of the box going to be ready to go for me. Okay so it's time to take the shell off and there's a couple things I want to point out to you. So this particular locomotive there are tabs there's uh, two on each side here there's two here and then one at the back. This one you don't have to take any of the couplers off, you don't have to unscrew anything, it's basically those plastic snap clips. Um, the whole hood, including the cab, comes off. So because this handrail is attached to the frame, we on both sides we just sort of have to gently loosen it to make sure that it doesn't get caught up on anything. And now basically, you just have to 
gently work the work the shell off. So don't force it. Um, I know your tendency is to try to force it. You just have to be gentle and careful and take your time with this. So I'm gonna move the camera out of the way so I get a better angle on this, but I'm gonna basically just wiggle this off here and it'll get us access to the, the board. Okay, I got the tabs loose. So this whole piece just slides off and you can see there is the wires for the, um, the rear LED light. Here's the front light and then here's your board. And so a couple things I wanna draw your attention to. So here's the headlight. Um, this board right here is your um, the DC jumper that we're gonna take off and this has an X-18 plug on it. Here you have your power feeds coming in. This simple wire job, you got a front and rear LED light. So two wires per light. So here is, like I said, here's your jumper board. And then I'm gonna show you a couple of cool things here. Now, one of the things I didn't realize because I never had a, a Walther's main line that I did a DCC conversion on. There's actually a one millimeter micro plug here that is for the speaker. I was thinking that I was gonna have to wire the speaker directly to the uh, DCC decoder, but since we have this little port on here, it's gonna make installing this um, locomotive, or the speaker on this locomotive, pretty simple. I'm just gonna run two wires to a one millimeter micro and plug it in there. So here's the other really, really cool thing. And I said I um, use scale sound speakers and I ordered it specifically for Walther's SW, or, um, SW7. So this enclosure here is where the speaker goes. I don't know how I can see it on the camera. There's four screws holding this in. There's a cradle for the LED. So, um, Scale Sounds manufactured these where I can pull this box off, screw the speaker on, has the cradle for the LED, so everything's gonna fit nice and neatly underneath the shell of the locomotive. So um, that made this well worth the purchase price to make this wiring job a little easier. So what I'm gonna do before I start disassembling the locomotive, I'm just gonna get uh, my soldering iron out and we'll get the feeders off of here so this is ready to go and then we'll go ahead and get it installed. So here's what the micro plug looks like. Again, one millimeter. Um, you can get these pretty much anywhere. Um, Amazon has them. Scale sound speakers sells them as well. So just make sure if you're gonna do this job to go ahead and get one of these. Um, so just real quick, I got my solder here. I'm gonna go ahead and just, I'm gonna tin these real quick and I'll go ahead and get them on the speaker. So you can see this has the, the red, so I'm gonna go ahead and solder the red wire to that lead. There we go. So this is wired and ready to go. Now we're gonna remove the, uh, just this enclosure here. So there's a piece of scotch tape on here. I'm just gonna grab my blade and get underneath it here a little bit. I'm gonna just sort of gently peel this off. I'm gonna save it because I'm gonna use it to 
connect these wires back when I'm done, or secure the wires, I should say. And if you ruin it, you ruin it. You get a new piece of tape. Okay, so we get this pulled off. I'm just gonna set this off to the side here. So now the LED, we don't even have to unwire it. We'll just let that, we'll move that out of the way. And then there's just four Phillips heads and two of these heads are actually below the, um, the board here. So I'm gonna have to unscrew the board. There's a screw right here and I should be able to get access to it. So I'm gonna shut the camera off. I will show you before I take this off. So give me one second. Okay, I wanted to show you this. So there's actually two screws holding the, the the board in place. There's one back here and there was one right here. So I just undid this one and then you can just gently sort of slide this out of the way and that's gonna get you access to these other two screws. So I'm gonna pull these off here real quick. this piece comes out we just have to be careful of those two pickups and we're good to go so now that I got this was the piece that was on here and I just wanted to show you it is pretty much a, a, a perfect fit so I can ensure the shell will go back on just fine overlay the two you can see the screw holes line up perfectly so shouldn't have any trouble getting this installed one of the things I will show you real quick here is sorry what I was saying at the end of that last segment was when we set this on here we want to make sure these the power pickups are connected but before I actually put the board back in place I have to plug this micro port in because once this is slid back, I'm not gonna have very much clearance. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this. I'm gonna get a couple screws in, I think, and then I'll go ahead and plug that in and get it set and ready to go. Okay, so I got the speaker, the first two screws in. What I'm gonna do before I put the last ones in, I'm gonna get the LED back where I want it or where it belongs because I wanna make sure that the wires for the headlight are where I need them to be before I mess with the speaker lights here. So I'm just going to take that piece of tape, just be real careful, get that tape back down in there. Okay, so those are where I want them to be. Here's my speaker wire and I'm just going to Carefully plug it into this port here. There it goes. I'm gonna gently make sure those are intact. Okay, I'm gonna get these last two screws in and I'm gonna get the board back in place. Got those last two screws in. Now I'm just gonna reconnect my board here with this tiny little screw and we have successfully got the speaker installed and then we got the the lights back and everything ready to go for the speaker so as i mentioned before i'm going to use a loke sound 5 and it's a loke sound 5 micro and it's next 18 so let's go ahead and pull this out of the box again as i mentioned earlier Generally, you can get these blank and then program them if you have a low programmer or a lot of dealers will actually program them for you. You just have to tell them what sound file you want. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out here. So it's a micro decoder, so it's real small. And then right here is the Next18 plug. 
So I'm gonna get this stuff out of the way and I'll zoom in and show you how to change out the decoder. So this part's pretty easy. The main thing is to just make sure that you plug the decoder in the direct, correct direction. And this one is actually pretty simple. So I'm gonna pull out the DC jumper here and you can, I'm gonna flip it over as I take it out. So here is the plug. So I'm just gonna flip my decoder over so you can see they're both running the same direction. I'm just gonna take this little Loke Sound 5 Micro and just plug it right in there. Make sure it seeds. There we go. And it's installed and we're ready to put the shell back on the locomotive. Okay, you can see I got the hood and everything reinstalled. Looks great. I didn't damage it too much. It was a little bit of a struggle. And also while I was doing this one, I did the other locomotive uh, 1203. So I got both of these um, speakers installed and decoders installed. So now let's go ahead and get the test track out and let's test these things out and make sure they work. Okay, you can see I've got my test layout here. So again, ordinarily, if you would have bought these decoders blank, which is uh, pretty much how they come unless you have your dealer uh, preload the sound for you. Um, we'd move into um, the third part of this video where I'd show you how to program uh, the decoders. I'm still gonna do that even though these are already programmed, but since they're programmed, I just wanna verify real quick that everything is installed properly. The speakers are working, the lights work, um, the decoder responds. So I'm just gonna grab 1203 here drop it on the track here and we'll go ahead and give it a quick test okay so let's go ahead and hit track power and this is default address 3 so I'll hit my default address 3 first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in forward direction check the front light by pressing F0 you have to take my word for it just a little bit. You can kind of see the side lights here. Let's go ahead and reverse it. You can see that they both work. I'll verify it works, uh, even though I'm not gonna move the angle of the camera. So do a couple other quick sound functions. Bell works, horn works. Initiate startup sequence. Give it a little throttle. So we successfully installed the speaker and the decoder. So we converted this locomotive from a DCC ready, but it was a DC locomotive. I uh, got a Loke Sound 5 in it. And this was, for me, is a little bit, it's obviously a little, little bit of work, but to not have to pay for uh, the DCC and sound that Walter was offering with the essential sound unit decoder that I probably would have swapped out anyway. I was able to save about $65 getting the DC only version, I invested right at about $100, I think between the decoder and the speaker is right at $100. So I have a great sounding locomotive. Um, I'm gonna stop the video here. I'm gonna test 1206 real quick, make sure that works, and then we'll jump into part three. So here's 1206. Again, default address three. Go ahead and apply track power. Headlight, front, tell it's on. Rear, you can tell it's on. Do a startup sequence here. Give it a little bit of throttle.
perfect they both work so this installation was successful thank you for watching part two of my review so i'm going to go ahead and jump into part three part three will be um, basically how you would program the decoder and it is using the esu log programmer so if you don't have a log programmer it's really hard to, to uh, install sound files while it's impossible to install sound file files if you don't have the log sound decoder um, or the, the look programmer I mean so stay tuned for part three we'll go ahead and um, work on this on the look programmer and I'll do a full sound demonstration with it so thanks for watching part two and we'll hopefully see you back soon